And so here we go, our top story, 71% of students at O level failed. I mean, okay, if I can put it the other way around, 20, 28 to 29% passed. Pass pass yeah. However, to unpack this, because we had questions to ask yesterday, why, where, when, what? And of course, mm. to help us do that, we invited on to Morning Rush Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Siviso Inlovo of the Zimbabwe Teachers Association, the largest teachers association in Zimbabwe. Siviso, welcome to Morning Rush. Good morning, Andy, and good morning to your viewers and listeners. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, of course, 71%. Um, as a parent, ourselves, all of us, you know, I'd rather focus on that number. And to try and understand why, why were so many kids, in your view, failing? Is it, is it due to your teachers? I mean, let me be direct with you. Thank you very much, Andy. I think that is a very minimalistic approach to... Uh, apportion the blame to educators in this country. Uh, the problem with the education system in this country is that it has itself not revolved sufficiently to take up the changes in life that we must face. So it is a system failure, if I may use that correct term, the education system failure. When we say 71% children have failed, you are saying we are condemning a big chunk of people mm -hmm. to doldrums of poverty or failure and labeling them as failures. That is wrong. That's the system that is labeling them that way. Why I'm saying it's a system, where in the history of this country have you seen a pass rate that is beyond 30%? Meaning ever since we started, we created a bottleneck which constricts the successes of many of our learners. In other words, we are still knowledge driven. Our examination system is facing uh, children with a, an idea that they should recall knowledge for the sake of knowledge. And yet we should be emphasizing on competence and skills of individuals which will vary from one individual to the other so that we can make those people useful in the mm -hmm. economy, make them useful in any space of life. But, okay, but, but you're then, basically, from what I'm hearing, you're saying, you're, you're saying essentially the curriculum is wrong. This is what you seem to be what saying, is, yes, basically. Yes. But isn't the curriculum just being changed? Right, it has been changed. But what is happening in the mindset of the leaders in this curriculum change is a philosophy of accommodation, where we are taking the old garbage of creating a knowledge-based examination and carrying on with it in the pretext that we are changing. We are not changing fast enough. So what is needed here is a complete revolution and removing it. Look, and there has been a, a cry that we are not sufficiently resourcing continuous assessment for the learning areas that children have. What it means is we are not picking up those aptitudes of children right from the beginning of their life in schools up to the university so that we can channel their talents correctly and appropriately for development of the country. So clearly, this is a system failure. And my approach mm -hmm. would be to advise the authorities, in particular the Zimsek board, to restructure the, the, the approach to examination move away completely from this knowledge and content-based examination system. This is what is going to happen. Mm. Otherwise, currently, we'll be attacking the soul of the teachers mm. and making it look like... Yeah, because as we said earlier, we don't want to approach and blame. blame. That's not yeah. right. What yeah. we want is to fix this and get yes. above that 30% bottom. Rate. In right. fact, I would love to see 80%, pass you know, 70% yeah. 70 pass, pass rate, rate and 20% failure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I would love to see, but... Well, you know, um, with, with... I was saying the other day that when I wrote my exams, that was years ago, I'm still Only very yesterday. young though, <laughs> Only yesterday. but right. it was also still very difficult. And what you're saying is uh, putting this whole change, how long is this going to take to be implemented? Because I wrote years ago and the same thing is still happening now. Correctly. That's the system that we have taken over from the colonial masters. It's still there. It's still there. So it's still intact. And we, that's why I'm saying the, the, the philosophy of accommodation, taking it a little bit and fearing to leave it, is what is killing us. Mm -hmm. uh, at the present moment, it's under-resourced. That's why right. we are seeing ourselves going that direction. And when you talk about uh, this pass rate, then you try to classify the schools. Who are passing? Yes. Out of 200,000 yeah. learners, <laughs> right. you may find that the schools that you are picking up, those the elite schools that are always having a selection criteria where they're saying, we'll take the five pointers, we'll take so many learners. And those are the children who still come up 
tops. Mm -hmm. But what about the child from back of the beyond? Well, this is, this is my question. Yeah. You have yes. the statistics, okay? Yes. If you look at that 71% uh, failure rate, I don't know what to call it, unpass rate, let's call it that yes. rather than failure. Because I appreciate what you're saying. We don't want to label children failures now, because you're not, by the way. Yes, correct. Where has most of, where did most of that happen? In the rural area? I was saying, this is it. most of our village schools. Most of our... What does, that tell you Why, yeah, what does that tell you? What does that, what does that, does that tell that you as a teacher's boss? It tells me that these are the schools that are under-resourced. Right. And these are the schools from vulnerable communities. So we are not creating sufficient steps for us to bring them on board. Look, if you go to a school like in Chimani Mani, mm. the schools that were affected by the disasters, mm. Mm. What do you think the learners then got after that yeah. when we tried to re-energize the education? Mm. Did we pick it up from the pieces and made it up to, up to scratch? Certainly not. Mm. And so they went behind and they are still behind. And that is where we needed to at least raise the pedestal and bring them to the level of where others are. Okay, now you, That's okay. Now you talked about rural schools having, having these, these low pass rates. Um, why, though? I mean, you said resourced, okay? Are we talking resource in terms of books? Are we talking resource in terms of teachers, of, of, teachers of, of, of equipment? Are we talking about transportation? What are we talking about resource here? It's the whole gamut of the issues. First, you look at the teachers who would not want to go there. Why? Because the schools are poorly resourced. The best teachers would like to go to the best schools. And this is why we should be creating incentives for the teachers to remain in those poorly uh, resourced schools. And currently, unfortunately, what we've seen is our education system is popularizing the educators because all the educators are treated the same. Those in the rural areas are the same. Mm. And those who are in the urban areas who have got advantages. So the treatment, therefore, should therefore be disaggregated so that we are promoting those areas. So in my view, the salaries and the remuneration for educators would have been revised by our system, but alas, but, that is not okay, I'm a bit, okay, I'm not sure. That. Okay, you're saying that <laughs> if the teachers were remunerated better, then we'd have seen a higher pass rate, but that hasn't hold true, because if we did some statistics, I mean, going back to 19, when was it, 1990 or something, yeah, 20, as you yourself said, we haven't really got past 30%, uh, have we? Well, I'm talking about attracting the best minds okay. into those areas. Okay. Uh, the issue of the pass rate is another story. Look, let me it, it be very clear with you here. Um, the grading system, if I may say, is syndicated, if I may use that it's word. It's ABCD. Right, yeah. is run. Then when we're saying uh, this is an A-class student, at what pass rate are you saying so? An A-class student in 2019 could be a student who earned 70%. Right. Right. A B-class student in 2013 could have been a student who earned 80% of the points in the examination. Right. So now, the, then, the, the, then when it comes to the grading system, it's therefore reviewed, yeah. regraded, and the decision to pass the children now lies with the examiner. I, I want to ask you a question because I saw this in the UK. In the UK, they realized that O levels were too difficult. And also, kids were failing them and it was really knocking them back. Because when you're 16, 17 and you fail like that, it can affect your whole yeah, life. Correct. So what they decided was to make it a lot easier to pass them so that kids could go into the A level and university streams or into technical colleges where, as you said, they could learn skills and, and they wouldn't be in their own minds think, oh, we failed, we, we failed. failed. In school, I mean, yes. is that something to consider? In other words, not, not make these too, too, too easy, yeah. but enough that most kids can pass them and then go up and, and take and get into more colleges, more technical skills and so forth. If you got me right, I said we should move away from knowledge and content. content Let's yeah. get to competence and skills. Right. So if we do that, then we've struck the right note mm -hmm. because we are going to be tapping on the creativity of the learners. Instead of assessing you how much you can recall, yeah. how do I know how, how much you can recall, uh, uh, then, triangles. How, see, how, how, how are you creative about that? theory that you have been given and how does it bring about change to a society? How does it answer to the problems of Zimbabwe? So this is where you should be creating critical thinkers mm. in mind. And we are assessing for critical thinking. Skills. Not just my, not, not whether I can not remember knowledge, yeah. or how yeah. I can study. Because some kids can't study. Yeah. Some kids, yeah, they cram. Like, yeah. I know a kid, a kid yeah. he crammed, he passed. Yes. But I mean, what did he learn afterwards? Nothing. So you're calling for a total, I mean, your association and yourself are calling for a total revamp of the way we look at education, particularly at O-level in yeah, Zimbabwe. Yes, the, the, the piecemeal approach that we've done is not the best. Look, we introduced this curriculum change as far back as 1999. 
And wow. in Zimbabwe, we have been picking up at least the easy path mm. and trying to implement it. If we looked at what Nzira Masanga report has, mm. it has all these things laid down. Mm. And if we had implemented those as far back then, mm. where would we be today? I want to ask you about colour. Uh, colour, is that what it's called? Yeah, I think colour it's colour. Is, is that what it's called? I mean, that, that, that seems to be... I mean, it sounds on paper as a great idea, but in practice, it's expensive, it's hard to do, particularly out in the rural areas. Tell us your views on, on that, on that program. Uh, uh, mark my word. I think that would be the best. And that is what should in, be incorporated in the final exit report of the learner. To help them in that market. Yes, and then we say, this learner we have monitored from ECT right through up to university, and he has exhibited these attributes throughout. And therefore, we think he fits to be in a this. doctor, an engineer, and this. Mm. This is where the aptitude is. Mm. Not this is what their recall mentality is fitting to be. Now we, so we have, we have to move best. on, unfortunately. But yeah. what what are you going to do? Okay. I, you know, I suppose every year 30% pass rate yeah. in, you're in, you're out. We, of course, here on Morning Rush are saying, look, we'd hope it to be higher. What are you as a union going to do in terms of communication, collaboration, working together with the different ministries, particularly the Ministry of, and, of Education? And obviously getting it implemented. Yeah, and, and as what are you going to be doing from now? Uh, from, for, for Tami Memorial, our union has been very instrumental in the education change, and we remain that. And we take ourselves, when it comes to this, as partners. Mm. Never mind the skirmishes that we have yeah, because of the influences elsewhere. Mm. They are not the issues no. here. The issues are, what are we making for the Zimbabwean education? And we have been contributing, and we will continue to contribute our, in, in the debate. And in the spaces that were given, we do bring this to the authorities and to their knowledge at various fora. Mm. And so that clearly to us is our mandate, and we continue to execute that mandate of trying to improve the quality of public education in this country. Yeah, look after the kids. Because, I mean, I understand that you have issues paying and so forth, but at the end of the day, teachers, it's a vocation, isn't it? You look after our children, you want to teach our children, you want to get them... I don't want the older space. I don't want it vocationalized. I want it professionalized. Wow. I like that very Good. much. Dr. Sefiso <laughs> in Global Chief Executive Officer of Zimbabwe Teachers Association. We're going to have a conversation about some different programs. I can see. Lots to talk about here. Thank you Thank you much. so much for coming on Morning Rush. The good day in the that, was good, that was great. That now, was at least we're great. starting to get there. Right? Somewhere. We're starting yes. to understand <laughs> exactly what's going on. And Dr. Svito, it would be nice also to get a hold of the ministry to get their views, and I'm sure we're going to do that soon.